welcome to today's lecture. Uh, we will continue uh, our discussion on the uh, aspects of, uh, of the computer uh, applica computer programs software for fluid inclusion data. We just uh, saw the uh, formulations for the uh, aqueous fluid uh, for calculation of its of the density and the isocore and doing any kind of thermobarometric exercise. Uh, the computer uh, programs could be accordingly written. So, just uh, to continue the discussion uh, what uh, uh, for the other type of inclusions let us say it is a carbonic or an aqueous carbonic inclusion there we uh, there also we do have a uh, we have quite a number of formulations which have been developed uh, over a period of time like the one which we discussed before is like of like a red leach equation to account for the non ideality uh, non ideal uh, parameters like this uh, uh, a and the b parameter uh, which are the non ideal parameter from deviation from the ideal uh, gas equation and that's kind of uh, equation like red leach kong equation when it is uh, uh, converted into a semi empirical kind of uh, formulation taking into account the uh, theoretical basis such as the interaction of these molecules uh, as hard spheres and taking into consideration their forces of attraction and the potentials and the observe the values uh, on the volumetric properties. One of the problem is that the experimental data on carbon dioxide bearing fluid are much less compared to what are available for pure aqueous fluid. Uh, if we have any aqueous carbonic inclusion or a carbonic inclusion we still we, we can use this particular equation for calculation of the uh, the density and the uh, pressure and also the once we know the uh, equation or the if we have calculated the parameter which is a and b and also solved for the molar volume then we can uh, always calculate the uh, slope as a dp by dt and as one can see that this dp by dt slope will not be very linear and uh, that is what we experience when we calculate for a pure carbon dioxide these a and b parameter will be representing the pure uh, 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 species for example, the a for CO2 which is a function of temperature which was shown before and uh, also for mixtures which are worked out to be a product of this term uh, depending on the uh, species that are present. Uh, if there are two species then it is a double summation term with the non ideal term a is com coming out to be the individual terms plus a cross term which is a H 2 CO 2 or uh, in case of H 2 CO 2 uh, fluid or if it if it is an H 2 NaCl CO 2 then we consider them to be a pseudo binary and take the aqueous component as H 2 NaCl with fixed 2 8 percent NaCl and the carbon dioxide is the other component and also calculate the uh, mixing parameters A and B. And, uh, so, these are these were elaborated in the previous lecture 18 or the coefficients. What we did not show were the uh, weight percent NaCl dependent expansions for the uh, for the A and B parameters for water which uh, one can always um, look up from the uh, who is doing for a uh, water NaCl CO2 system. And uh, such kind of parameters need to be worked out for the binary if it is a CO2 CH4 or H2O CO2 and pseudo binary like H 2 NaCl CO 2 and H 2 O and CO 2 CH 4 and these parameters are worked out. So, the then the, the uh, density which can be calculated. So, uh, given the uh, composition if we we know the mole fraction of the components like carbon dioxide and water in any fluid mixture then these uh, A and B parameters are worked out at any particular temperature and then this equation which can be expanded as a cubic equation in V can be rewritten as a cubic uh, equation cubic equation in V can be solved by standard numerical technique and the molar volume could be calculated. From the molar volume one can calculate the density because uh, the inverse of molar volume is the specific uh, volume the, uh, uh, the specific volume and then the mole molecular weight will give you the uh, grams per cc volume in terms of grams per cc. Uh, sorry the density in grams per cc and the isocore the slope could be calculated uh, for this particular fluid or a fluid mixture 
and pressure at any uh, temperature could be calculated from the isocore by doing the extrapolation as has been shown. So, that is the these are the implementation which has been done in the softwares which were discussed and uh, as it is expected. So, uh, where there are many variations like for example, a virial equation or there are many forms many different forms of these uh, equation of state to account for the non ideality in the mixing of this fluid mixture have been proposed. They, they, they can be used, but the one which uh, uh, has been implemented uh, what has been shown from the uh, example of the software that was demonstrated is uh, the one which is used here. So, the uh, by using the Microsoft Excel uh, visual basic uh, macro based software package that uh, as I, gave, I just mentioned, but could not demonstrate because of the version mismatch problem here. One could see here that this is the isocore intersection obtained from the uh, a software program which we provisionally named is named as Flink is still under in the process of development and uh, this visual basic macro based uh, Microsoft Excel package for fluid inclusion data. This represents one aqueous inclusion whose uh, isocore is drawn by using the formulation as discussed. This is the isocore for the carbonic inclusion coexisting carbonic inclusion and the provision has been made to check whether these two could intersect and if the intersection is possible then what is the intersection value as has been shown here. For example, this is the aqueous uh, inclusion isocore this is the carbonic inclusion isocore and they intersect at a temperature of 264 and a pressure of 1164. This is how we uh, derive or we uh, deduce the pressure temperature path of evolution in a fluid whether it is in a mineralizing system or in any other uh, crustal environment like metamorphism or deformation. If we get several such intersections corresponding to coeval inclusion pairs then we uh, can have these values. So, the, so, once these are the, uh, the Microsoft Excel generated uh, graphs, they could always be customized depending on the user's requirement. This is an example how a histogram is generated, uh, the uh, demo uh, could not be shown because of the version mismatch here, but this kind of uh, histogram also are generated from the program or the soft the uh, graphical user interface based package uh, which is developed or can be developed by anybody who uh, has a has an interest in writing programming writing programs so the codes and can I would explore the different uh, functionalities of different uh, uh, environment that is available like whether it is a visual basic or visual C++ and also a fluid evolution diagram which is also can be generated by the uh, table of data which was shown on the uh, the temperature of uh, uh, melting of the depression in the freezing point and the temperature of homogenization and using the equation of state for H 2 NaCl fluid and then taking up taking the two uh, fields for plotting of this kind of data which is essentially a uh, inherent feature of Microsoft Excel which has been used. Okay. So, that brings us to the close of the lecture series on the uh, on fluid inclusions in minerals, the principles, method, uh, practice and the application where we have discussed the basic uh, I mean for any beginner who is intending to adopt this particular technique for solving the problem that one is addressing. It is a problem of mineralizing system, the work fluid ancestry, the fluid of evolution of mineralizing system or metamorphism or deformation. So, now it is a uh, time that let us take a review of uh, uh, the discussions that uh, the issues that we have discussed and uh, just to uh, make uh, just to have some points to recapitulate that the fluid inclusions are definitely uh, they are very ex extremely useful geological samples that are their storehouse of hidden information on the origin and evolution of rocks in diverse geological settings. 
and uh, as we have said before that this is the only means by which the fluid is actually being directly sampled and we believe that it is independent of the actual timing of formation of the rock. If the rock is preserved in the earth's crust for several hundreds or thousands of millions of years of time and that we are sampling them on the surface once they are exposed the rock then we are we feel that they are still the remnant of the ancient crustal fluid. And there are many uh, situations like say for example, the work done on there are uh, on the uh, Iswa complex in Greenland by analyzing fluid inclusions in the in quartz in of the one of the uh, uh, rock units from Iswa complex. There were proposition about the nature of the ancient sea water or what was the net what was the characteristic of the Archean sea water and such kind of uh, conclusions such kind of uh, interpretations could only be made uh, because we are able to directly sample the ancient geological fluid. As we have said that <coughs> in they are of tremendous academic importance because we are trying to address basic issues of basic geological problems and that is how they are of tremendous academic importance, but it is not only confined to just that they are also of high utility value as aid in mineral and oil exploration. We uh, have not been able to uh, elaborately discuss or take up the uh, topic of uh, petroleum exploration using fluid inclusion because petroleum exploration uh, it uh, always needs uh, that the experts who are uh, or the experts on hydrocarbon to also uh, be consulted. But then from fluid inclusions it is only uh, we can only look at the their utility. We can only see them exactly the way we see them see the fluid inclusions in any ordinary uh, rock or a, or a quartz vein or different types of host minerals that we have discussed. The only dis difference in the fluid inclusions which are there in uh, the sedimentary basins the petro petroliferous basins is that they are present as the diagenetic fluid sometimes in the orthogenic overgrowth of the plastic uh, uh, sediments like a sandstone is which the reservoir rock and in that the oil or the hydrocarbons are also present within the fluid inclusions. So, these hydrocarbons when they will be observed under ordinary uh, 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 microscope with uh, the light in the visible range they may not be very uh, distinct or obvious. So, that is why they need to be studied they do have a very characteristic fluorescence when they are studied in ultraviolet light. So, so they need specialized uh, microscopes for their observation any petrological microscope which is equipped with, uh, with the uh, attachment for studying fluorescence with UV light they will be the ideal one for studying the or looking at the fluid inclusions and from the fluorescence characteristics the, tip, the typical the hydrocarbon species which could be the light or the heavier hydrocarbons or sometimes the uh, bitumen which is present in the form of black uh, inclusions which I showed uh, from some of the fluid inclusions from Mississippi Valley type deposits. So, these uh, um, these fluid inclusions could be studied and once they are composition is determined by uh, the similarly by uh, looking at them and seeing the <coughs> fluorescence characteristics and then characterizing them through uh, micro analytical non destructive techniques like Raman spectroscopy and also obtaining the uh, homogenization behavior from that the and looking at these uh, inclusions in fracture spaces which are generated at different uh, time then the maturity of the hydrocarbon and the migration path could be determined and they are of utility in oil exploration. So, exact and there are many different uh, 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 literature I mean they are available in the public domain where the uh, many such uh, situations could be seen the oil uh, the fluid inclusions in orthogenic uh, minerals in petroliferous sedimentary basins. So, through the uh, topics that we have covered one thing uh, is very clear that fluid inclusion research fluid inclusion study does 
need a good understanding one has to have a good understanding on the phase relations in complex fluid mixtures the p v t x relationships which is an essential prerequisite for, for working on fluid inclusions. And as you have seen that till uh, today the there are many uh, areas many gaps and many limitations which are still visible in the formulation of the appropriate p v t x relationships in complex fluid mixtures and to formulate a uh, uh, accurate uh, equations of state in uh, a pure pure aqueous system or aqueous plus uh, carbonic uh, systems and only we we will be applying. So, it becomes a uh, challenge for the people who are doing the fluid inclusion work to understand the intricacies and also to attempt to develop uh, refine the PVTX relationship in different fluid systems. Uh, so, and it as, as it is also quite clear that a sound knowledge and uh, inclination towards instrumental methods is an added advantage of a fluid inclusionist. Even we know that a managing a heating freezing stage itself is uh, needs a lot of involvement and uh, because uh, the proper calibration of the of the heating freezing system the and also when it comes to the uh, micro analytical or the analytical uh, analysis of the fluid inclusions uh, when it is a a very tedious or time consuming process like uh, bulk analysis by cross leach method and then it needs one to understand the uh, analytical details of uh, what is <coughs> how to, or what what analytical method to go for like a cross leach can be analyzed by an ion chromatograph for its uh, concentration of the different anions and cations and we have seen that there are yet uh, not a very single analytical protocol available where all the anal cations and anions could be uh, analyzed and sometimes it is uh, the uh, use of <coughs> uh, instruments like an ICPMS which is advisable where the leachates also could be analyzed when they are present in much uh, smaller concentrations in part per, parts per billion. So, it all depends on uh, the instrumental methods its availability. So, even the uh, simple analytical method like cross leach the technique also could give very useful uh, results in terms of the characteristic of the fluid. Uh, <coughs> and now, we would uh, like to uh, just uh, browse through the uh, review the uh, topics or the subject that we have covered in this particular lecture series through something which generally uh, could be described under something like a frequently asked questions. I understand that this frequently asked questions will not be exhaustive cannot be made exhaustive right at this moment, but these frequently asked questions have been formulated in consultation with graduate students who are working and are using fluid inclusions uh, for their research and uh, so that uh, we know that what are the questions that I might come to the mind of um, a student or a researcher who is beginning to uh, adopt this particular technique to solve his problem. So, the basic uh, thing that comes to mind that how should one classify inclusions? Because we see that the inclusions could broadly be compositionally divided into the aqueous fluid or the mixed aqueous carbonic fluid and we see that in the aqueous fluid there could be uh, many different species of dissolved electrolytes. There could be chloride, there could be carbonates, bicarbonates, sulphate and there is basically no limitation or no end to what could be the different electrolyte species, but they could be all be going under the similar uh, simple classification that they are aqueous inclusions. And we can have the carbonic inclusions where the carbon dioxide is the dominant component and you could have species like uh, methane, argon, nitrogen or H 2 S and the other sulphur bearing gas species which remain miscible and when they are present in the inclusion their concentration uh, is a variable uh, ranges and sometimes they are only uh, suspected from the freezing behavior 
or the, uh, the temperature different temperature at which the phase changes are taking place. And say for example, like the critical temperature being elevated critical temperature of carbon dioxide instead of 31.1 it might go to uh, a higher value of uh, say 30 or even more. And uh, sometimes we uh, ascribe it to the presence of H2S whose critical temperature is uh, more or if it is the critical temperature is less then there are other species like methane and other species which could be present there. Now, the so then it should it could make one. So, one, one sees the classification one inclusion in a particular sample and thinking that there are both aqueous and mixed type of inclusions present then we go for a classification of the inclusions to different types. From uh, my experience I would I could only su suggest and share that the classification when when someone is doing a petrography and is attempting to document or in the, in the uh, for the documentation wants want to classify the inclusions. Then the classification should be simple readable and correlatable to microthermometric data because sometimes by making the classification complicated it also loses its correlatability to the microthermometric data that is generated and also it becomes a difficult to, to read for any person who is following the work. For example, you will find sometimes in literature that the fluid inclusions aqueous inclusions are being divided into different types A, B, C, D depending on just 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent or 50 percent of uh, vapor uh, proportion of the vapor that is present. And as I have uh, emphasized on this point that visual estimation of the uh, vapor bubble or the, uh, the vapor in an aqueous inclusion is very misleading and erroneous. So, subdivision of aqueous biphase inclusions based on visual estimation of vapor bubble proportion should be avoided. And in case there are inclusions, so the only thing that is possible in an aqueous inclusion where the vapor bubble proportion is variable, the only one thing that could be possible that those inclusions could be vapor rich and would homogenizing into vapor phase. So, if we are classifying them only into the one type, let us say that we say that aqueous biphase liquid plus vapor as our type 1 let us say. Then when we find that uh, many of the type 1 inclusions are actually homogenizing into vapor phase that can be very well be documented as the results of microthermometry and that does not need to specifically be sub classified into vapor rich and liquid rich inclusions. And uh, so, they can be described adequately uh, while reporting results of microthermometry and presentation and also as we saw before that when we are suppose the sample is only having aqueous biphase inclusion and uh, we are we have completed the microthermometric uh, acquisition of the uh, data and we are going to present the data and some of the inclusions or a good population of inclusions coexisting with uh, liquid rich inclusions also homogenized into vapor phase. So, on the histogram we can represent them in different legend or different kind of uh, symbol or, or as we show, showed before the sum of the histograms could be just put on the reverse side of the uh, horizontal axis and can be represented as homogenizing into liquid as well as vapor. And those diagrams could be better readable because if those kind of homogenizations take place at the deep similar pressure temperature ranges then the interpretation towards uh, a boiling fluid, fluid becomes more, uh, more definite. Similarly, the subdivision of aqueous carbonic inclusions based on visual estimation of the proportion of carbonic phase also is sometimes done. That the carbonic liquid when they are present as uh, two liquids say for example, there are there is uh, one in one uh, inclusion aqueous carbonic inclusion where this is the L aqueous, this is the L carbonic and this is the V carbonic and suppose there is another inclusion which is over here. Uh, which is here and which is a uh, 
L equals, this is L carbonic and this is V carbonic. So, it may so happen that visually, visually these two inclusions are, are having different proportions of the carbonic and the aqueous liquid. And this variation could possibly be very gradational and this uh, variation again also is amenable to the problem of the geometry of the inclusion and the uncertainty on the third dimension and by just visually trying to estimate the proportion of the carbonic uh, liquid part would, uh, would be uh, misleading. So, again it is only from my experience and the suggestion that I could uh, make here that similarly the subdivision of the aqueous carbonic inclusions based on visual estimation of the proportion of carbonic phase should also be well, uh, should be also be avoided and they can be simply put into one category that the aqueous carbonic L aqueous plus L carbonic plus or minus V carbonic as one particular type. And similarly, if they also do exhibit different modes of homogenization one suppose there are two coexisting aqueous carbonic inclusion one is homogenizing to aqueous phase and the other one is homogenizing to carbonic phase these also could be very well uh, recorded and documented while reporting the microthermometry phase rate and we know that they do also have very important implications as far as the uh, entrapment conditions of this particular aqueous carbonic inclusions are concerned. Uh, often it is seen that aqueous biphase inclusions are put into subcategory based on presence or absence of pseudo Brownian motion. Uh, I find no reason in uh, making any subdivision of aqueous biphase inclusions based on the uh, whether there is a pseudo Brownian movement being executed in some and not in some other because it is a purely uh, 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 I mean a situation in which the it has got no relevance to the uh, compositional characteristic or the entrapment condition or the nature. Uh, And there is uh, there is also sometimes uh, one issue which usually comes up that we are reporting the different microthermometric parameters. Should there be a uniformity in the like for example, the mineral abbreviations are accepted or there uh, as has been agreed upon by the uh, by by some kind of an international convention that this particular abbreviation should be used whenever uh, the reporting of the uh, done in reporting of them is the being done in any scientific publication. So, should there be a uniform code of <coughs> notation of microthermometric parameters the answer could be yes, but the difficult uh, difficulty lies in that some kind of an agreement has to be made or internationally acceptable abbreviation has to be implemented for that. And as of now there is no such uh, agreement has been there. So, that is why sometimes some kind of uh, mismatch is observed. And the most of the notations that I have made during the course of this discussion is based on the book of uh, the Shepherd, Rankin and Alderton on the practical guide to fluid inclusions. And the uh, different types of uh, phase changes, the temperatures corresponding to the phase changes have been referred in the particular book. For example, the temperature of first melting is represented as T f m and sometimes you will find that this particular temperature is being referred to as T i m and that uh, seems to be a little uh, problematic because i could also stand for i's. Therefore, the representing the temperature of fast melting as T f m will be much more uh, logical than referring to that particular temperature as temperature of temp T i m. The temperature of hydrate or the hydrohalide generally we are talking we have only discussed about only particular one uh, hydrate that is uh, hydrohalide the other one is uh, the antarcticite which is the C A C L 2. CaCl2 6H2O this is the antarcticite and NaCl 2H2O which is hydrohalite. So, these are the two halides uh, two hydrates that we have discussed mentioned. Uh, so, whether 
we should have what notation for the temperature of hydrohalite melting. We generally use the THH which refers to temperature of hydrohalite and in the book of Schaeffer et al it is written as TMH H for hydrate that means temperature of melting of hydrate. Similarly, the temperature of dissolution of any of the daughter crystal like say halite or sylvite or for that matter any other mineral which could possibly dissolve on heating. So far we could see only these two mineral daughter crystals which actually dissolve and rest of them do not because of kinetic factors or maybe some other reason as yet not understood. So, we represent as T d halite or T d sylvite d standing for dissolution. In some cases some literature you will observe that this is being referred to as T s as temperature of solution, but generally it would be preferred that it should be represented as T d and the temperature of total homogenization in case of a aqueous carbon inclusion is T total is mostly uh, used by um, almost all the majority of the publications. So, these are the things which are being discussed because uh, the reading that uh, has to be made by a person who is doing a fluid inclusion work by referring to many books and also in that context I would also like to mention that in addition to the book of uh, the Schaeffer, uh, uh, Rankin and Alderton that was published way back in 1985 by Blackie and uh, uh, I have no idea about whether this uh, any later edition is available. The other one which was a compilation of uh, which was a monograph written by Edwin Reuter published as uh, one special uh, one uh, volume in the reviews in mineralogy uh, in 1984 as fluid inclusions and it is it is essentially a uh, massive compilation of all the work that was done by uh, Edwin Reuter at geological US geological survey and uh, where most of the things uh, and the fluid inclusion characteristics in different types of uh, geological environment have been discussed very elaborately. I have not uh, intentionally made reference to that particular uh, uh, compilation because for a beginner it may be uh, a bit difficult, but definitely that remains as one of the uh, publications which is to be referred to uh, and to get uh, to make some better understanding and uh, see many such uh, case studies being described for the application of fluid inclusions. So, temperature uh, sometimes the as we have discussed that in an aqueous carbonic inclusion while attempting to homogenize instead of homogenizing the inclusion get, gets uh, leaked or decrepitated. So, we discriminate we distinguish between the two terms decrepitation and leakage. Decrepitation is a complete the uh, escape of the content from the inclusion uh, where the inclusion uh, content is totally escaped or in case of a leakage we see that just the inclusion has deformed uh, by a little bit of a uh, fracturing of little deformation and the content little bit of a content is uh, has gone out from the main inclusion as just has been entrapped as a satellite inclusion somewhere nearby which I have also shown uh, diagrammatically before. So, te temperature of decrepitation uh, for an aqueous carbonic inclusion is sometimes reported, but as we know that it is of no value because uh, it does not give us anything uh, no volumetric property or not no important conclusion can be made from that. Sometimes it is uh, told that this temperature of decrepitation could be a very uh, close approximation to temperature of uh, homogenization if the inclusion is actually tending to homogenize by in the at the time when the any one of the component either the aqueous component or the comp carbonic component has reduced in the size considerably and is just on the verge of homogenizing. If at that point the temperature is uh, if the inclusion is decrepitating then it possibly would make some sense, but it is not usually true. And so, in that case we only take it as a temperature of homogeni total homogenization, but then temperature uh, denoting the temperature of decrepitation as T d will definitely conflict if we are representing T d as the dissolution, but they, it is used by some uh, authors some workers. Then the temperature of homogenization is universally used as T h temperature of homogenization usually refers to as temperature of liquid vapor homogenization of aqueous biphase inclusion or also pure carbonic inclusion. Sometimes uh, we use uh, for a partial homogenization that uh, we use T H carb. Uh, 
uh, like we put temperature of homogenization T h car to refer to the partial homogenization of the carbonic phase in a mixed aqueous carbonic inclusion. And then the density uh, which is uh, represented as rho and generally this uh, density we always mean when the, the inclusion has become homogeneous. So, whether it is the temperature of uh, homogeneous and liquid vapor homogenization or the temperature at which a daughter crystal is dissolved T d or the temperature of total homogenization of a aqueous carbonic inclusion. So, the density which is rho is essentially referring to the density of a homogeneous inclusion. So, density of the temperature of homogenization we always say either rho T h or as rho inclusion because rho inclusion sometimes would give you a better idea that yes that is the density which we are talking about the uh, homogeneous fluid that is the inclusion. So, we continue uh, in the next class about discussing about these frequently asked questions as far as fluid inclusion study is concerned. Thank you.